Hi students, I'll try in this educational video to technologically introduce how to determine the snow actions applied on the roofs based on Eurocode 1 standards, of course, as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. First, some basic notions about snow conditions, design situations, and load arrangements should be assimilated and properly taken into consideration when determining the snow actions. Based on Eurocod 1 standards associated to European standards 1991-1-3, two snow conditions are distinguished, normal conditions and exceptional conditions. Normal conditions are characterized by no exceptional snowfalls and no exceptional snowdrifts. This is the case A. For the exceptional conditions, we have three cases. The first one is characterized by exceptional snowfalls but no exceptional snowdrifts. This is the case B1. The second case is characterized by no exceptional snowfalls and exceptional snowdrifts. This is the case B2. And the third case is characterized by exceptional snowfalls and exceptional snowdrifts. This is the case B3. Also, two design situations are distinguished. The first one is the persistent transient design situation, and the second one is the accidental design situation. In fact, in accordance with the European standards 1990 colon 2002, snow actions may be treated as accidental action for a particular condition and depending on geographical locations. Finally, for the load arrangements, we have two types. The first one is the undrafted load arrangement and the second one is the drafted load arrangement. The undrafted load arrangement is characterized by snow actions uniformly distributed on the roof and the drifted load arrangement is characterized by snow actions non-uniformly distributed on the roof. Now I will talk about the snow actions coefficients and characteristic value. Based on Eurocode 1 standards associated to the European standards 1991-1-3, snow actions on a roof are depending on four coefficients and one characteristic value. The first coefficient is the snow load shape coefficient. The second one is the exposure coefficient. The third one is the thermal coefficient. The characteristic value is the characteristic value of snow on the ground at the relevant site. And the fourth coefficient is the coefficient for exceptional snow load. Well, the snow load shape coefficient is denoted by the Greek letter mu i and it's determined, for example, for a duo pitch roof based on the figure and the table that you see now in this slide. For other types of roofs, such as mono pitch roof or cylindrical roof or, or multi span roof, you can see the Eurocode 1 standards. For the exposure coefficient, it's denoted by the letter CE and it's determined uh, depending on the topography based on the table that you see now in this slide. For example, here for normal topography, the exposure coefficient CE is equal to 1. For the thermal coefficient, it's denoted by CT and it's equal to 1 as recommended value except for some glass covered roofs. For the characteristic value of snow on the ground at the relevant site, denoted by SK and it's dependent on the region. For example, for the Mediterranean region, SK is determined based on the formula that you see in this slide. In this formula, Z refers to the zone number as it is depicted by the figure uh, that you see in this slide. Uh, this figure is for the Mediterranean region and A refers to the site altitude above sea level. For, uh, for information about other regions, uh, see Eurocode 1 standards. And finally, the coefficient for exceptional snow loads is denoted by CESL 
and it's equal to 2 as recommended value now I will talk about the general formulas that permit to determine this new action so based on the Eurocode 1 standards associated to the European standards 1991-1-3 table A1 the snow action is depending on the snow conditions, the design situations and the load arrangements as it is depicted by the table that you see now in this slide. For example here for normal conditions we have not accidental design situation, we have only the persistent transient design situation and the snow action is determined as mu i multiplied by ce multiplied by ct multiplied by sk for both undrifted and drifted load arrangement if we examine another case for example the case b2 under the snow exceptional conditions you can notice that for the persistent transient design situation the snow action is determined for the undrifted and drifted load arrangement using the same formula except that for the drifted load arrangement the formula is used unless otherwise specified for roof shapes in Annex B in Eurocode 1 standards. You can notice also that for the accidental design situation, the snow action is defined only for the drifted load arrangement and it's simply expressed as mu i multiplied by sk for roof shapes specified in Annex B in Eurocode 1 standards. That's all for this educational video. If you have any questions, remarks or suggestions, please mention it in the comments. Thank you very much for your attention.